Hello everyone. Uh, here we have uh, the Mukunder uh, from Mukunder Robotics, uh, Mr. <coughs> Hello. Is it audible now? Okay. Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, here we have the uh, Mr. Uh, Niranjan SDR from Mukunder Robotics. Uh, now Mukunder is uh, completed the tech uh, in electronics and communication, and he's in the more than uh, five years of experience in the designing and development of the uh, different types of robots uh, in the field of the uh, robotics and automation, as well as in the field of the uh, drones designing as well. So now I would like to hand over the session to uh, Niranjan sir. And uh, sir, can you please continue with your uh, uh, presentation and can you give brief about the uh, what do you mean by robots, uh, how we can use different types of robots for different, different applications okay. and what is the usefulness for the uh, students who are in uh, field of robotics and mechatronics. So yes. they will get, gain your knowledge okay, and it is useful for us to uh, make the awareness about the different types of robots they design their applications over here. Yeah. So yeah. now I'd like to hand over the session to uh, Nirendra sir. Can you please continue, sir? Yeah, yes, yeah. It's like uh, really thank you for your uh, warm gesture and really thank uh, for uh, the Boral University for uh, 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 arranging this wonderful sir, uh, webinar yes. series. Sir, keep your uh, camera on, sir. Okay. Yes, now it's there. We can continue. Uh, it's like yeah, really thank you for uh, this uh, arranging the wonderful uh, webinar series. Okay, uh, and I really thank uh, the uh, it's like participants uh, who were uh, in the flow. Okay, it's like uh, now let me uh, get into the uh, clear view of uh, the future robotics and. Uh, automation and the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, like how the scenario is getting to be, let me uh, get into it. Actually, it's like uh, when, you, uh, when we see there are uh, three major categories uh, where we uh, go with robots, okay? The first one uh, will be a boat that is like for a dangerous uh, work category. It's like uh, wherever uh, the human uh, life is under risk, uh, we will be uh, getting into the picture of the dangerous uh, work life category. For example, uh, deep sea uh, diving, after that's like mining industry, after that, the iron and steel industry, and so on. So, uh, we'll be using the robots uh, for that. Okay, so like where human life is under uh, risk. And the second one will be for a uh, dull work category. Okay, so like dull work is nothing but uh, where we feel uh, history to do the work. Okay, uh, it's like it is a kind of a repeated uh, job categories. Yeah, and third one will be a dirty work. A dirty work is like where we feel uh, station, uh, just like core cleaning uh, works kind of. So, this three category is the main thing that uh, where we focus uh, for the implementation of uh, robotics. Uh, in okay. So, these three are the uh, main categories. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, in this three category, there are uh, uh, many types of robots are getting to the play. Okay, so like there are many types. The first one will be, as we all know, it is a humanoid. It's like a bar. Uh, this robot looks like exactly the appearance of a human being. Okay, the first one will be a humanoid robot, and it has how to say it's like uh, this robots are uh, uh, mainly uh, into the play for a, a technical purpose and to showcase the country's development. Okay. So that is about the humanoid one. Okay, the first one that will be humanoid one. And second one, uh, it is about the industry type. And in the industry type, there are uh, uh, many uh, different classification because industry robot plays a vital role in all uh, uh, industries. For example, uh, car manufacturing, iron and steel, food preparation. Okay, so industry robot plays a vital role. In industry robot itself, you'll be having the, uh, how to say it's like four classification. Uh, it's like six axis arm robot, uh, SCARA, after that, uh, uh, parallel robots, and after that, Cartesian robots. Okay, so in the industry robot itself, you will be having a huge, uh, uh, how to say, it's like it's huge strength. And it is a huge, uh, how to say, it's like it is huge market into the field. Okay, it plays a vital role in the industry robots. And third one will be a bio inspired robot. 
case like bionic bionic robot is nothing but a robot which look like a biological nature of our earth okay so uh, this robot uh, exclusively uh, meant for the spying purpose okay uh, for example in the picture i have shown you regarding the a spider one okay. it is a spider model and the next one will be a uh, uh, how to say a dog model okay it is exclusively meant for a spying purpose and after for a research uh, purpose as well okay it's like for research purpose uh, uh, we go with uh, the bio inspired robots and fourth one will be a mobile robot okay. it's like a mobile robot is nothing but a uh, uh, bear how to say it's like bear robots can move from one place to another place okay uh, this is uh, the Time, uh, where we can able to uh, mobility okay it's like we can able to carry out the material from one end to other end okay uh, so this four category okay that is like a mobile robot after that bio inspired and industry and human or okay this four robot uh, types uh, is the uh, overall uh, uh, how to say it's like overall uh, field robots okay it's like it will be overall into the field and in out of this four category this industry robots okay this industry robots has a huge uh, advancement and uh, inside the industry robot also will be having different types and it is a huge topic that uh, uh, when we get into the real time field it will be a huge topic now i like to uh, share you the uh, a uh, real time working of the industry robots okay the real time working of all the type and industry robot you'll have you'll be having exclusive uh, second category video okay uh, since uh, the robotics and automation and all the things that we be, will be dealing with only the practical one uh, in my webinar i usually have the more visual content because uh, rather than presenting with the theoretical uh, content uh, visual content will be more uh, helpful for uh, getting the uh, idea into the brain okay so i have i have to call the video uh, it's like uh, all the working video and uh, made it to be a like a compact pack so that you can have a clear uh, uh, visual experience uh, sir it's like can you uh, first video yeah okay okay uh, is it visible now all right from our list hello yes even knows how to cook food. The family of robot animals from the German developer of robotics, Festo, is growing. The company presents many new robots, for example, a swarm of ants that can interact with each other, as well as butterflies and dragonflies, which are characterized by all the ease and grace of these insects. When they were created, the company focused not only on their appearance, but also on behavioral characteristics. The ants coordinate with each other all their actions and movements. Each ant, that is 13 centimeters long, has on its belly a radio module, through which precise coordination is carried out. A 3D stereo camera in the head of the ant allows it to see, and the infrared optical sensor installed below monitors the movement of the mini robot. Meanwhile, two onboard batteries provide up to 40 minutes of wireless ants work, and they are recharged in the dock with the help of their antenna. As for butterfly robots, the weight of each butterfly is only 32 grams. This includes two servos, a pair of small batteries, and a laser-made casing. After one charging that lasts 15 minutes, butterflies will be able to flutter for about 4 minutes, and their flight looks very impressive. They're not just butterflies, but a whole system that consists of 10 high-speed infrared cameras installed in a room where butterflies fly. They track the infrared markers installed on the robots, transmitting data in real time to the central computer, so that's how coordination of butterflies is going in the space. You can hardly distinguish these bionic butterflies from the real ones in the room where they fly. Robotic seagulls and dragonflies that can fly just like their living relatives. The seagull was developed in 2012. Later, a dragonfly that can hang in the air, no worse than its natural counterpart, was invented. All the details of the dragonfly were made on a 3D printer. And you can control this miracle with a smartphone. Through these developments, the company could edge out the development market of flying drones, but it doesn't need it. 
The technology of flying and hovering in the air is worked on these two prototypes. The Kangaroo Robot At the core of the bionic kangaroo is a mechanism of repercussion. It uses the energy recovered from one jump to help it make another. Real kangaroos quickly get tired and could not jump for a long time without this mechanism. Springs that store mechanical energy on the landing and give it away on the next jump are used in this project. Bionic kangaroo that weighs 7 kilograms and highs 1 meter can make a jump of 80 centimeters in length and 40 centimeters in height. The power supply system that forces it to move is a pneumatic acculimator. The robot is controlled by a special bandage that reads myoelectric signals from the human forearm. Of course, Boston Dynamics is engaged in the development of robotic organisms. Nowadays, this is a kind of Skynet from the saga of the Terminator. Their dog robot was originally designed for military purposes, but it was too clumsy and primitive in its actions. Later, they created a robot cheetah that gallops at 45 kilometers per hour. This is a little bit faster than the peak speed of the current world record holder. Thus, a four-legged robot developed by order of the U.S. military today is able to catch up and destroy any person on this planet. And their new robot looks like a cross between a medium-sized dog and a giraffe. It can run, walk, sneak on half-bent, and can even bring you something to drink. It won't refuse to clean up, throw garbage into the trash can, and put dirty dishes into the dishwasher. At full charge, it can work up to 90 minutes, chasing the house, collecting garbage, and according to the video, make fun of the owner. The robot is wired with sensors that allow it to navigate in space and successfully carry out the tasks assigned to it, and it can easily climb stairs. Robot Shark this unmanned underwater facility, a robot shark length of about one and a half meters and weigh up to 45 kilograms. Like a real fish, the robot uses the tail to move and control its movement. The robot moves in a fish way, so it is very difficult to distinguish it or at least isolate it on the background of real marine fauna. It can swim above and dive to depth. Such shark can reach an enemy ship unnoticed. She can spy, repair ships, and arrange sabotage. Robot Cook This is not an animal, as you might think, but the invention is so cool that it can become one of your favorites in the future. A robot that knows how to cook different foods no worse than a real person. This miracle looks like two hands attached over the hob that can use any kitchen appliances, exactly copying the actions of a person. At the presentation, the robot cooked soup for the participants, spending only 30 minutes. Also noteworthy is that the system is controlled using a smartphone and scopes recipes from the net. It is reported that this robot is able to copy the movements of a cook's hands, shot on a video camera. In the version for sale, there will be a refrigerator and storeroom where the cooking products will be stored, and a robotic cook will put the dirty dishes into the dishwasher. In order to not frighten people with a RoboCop that waves with knives in different directions with great speed, the developers have made the robot chef slower than the average person. The Robot Spider From the beginning, it is worth mentioning that the Spider model was printed using a 3D printer. The engine is integrated with the servo motors of the PAW, three in each. The resulting system provides simple control of flexible plastic movements with convenient coordination from the control panel. He was shown in one of the series of Mythbusters. Underwater Robot Snake The mechanical snake is designed to perform maintenance and repair of various mechanisms on the seabed, mainly on oil platforms. It is capable of replacing costly, autonomous underwater vehicles, easily slipping into places where cumbersome robots cannot reach. Fish is another underwater inhabitant and environmental controller. How to control the level of water pollution? You can take samples, take it to the laboratory and analyze. 
and you can use a specifically designed robot in the form of a fish that will float in the water and check its purity. Robot fish tests were conducted in the port of the Spanish city of Gilgen. At this stage, it was checked how effectively they are able to determine the degree of water pollution and help to recognize the main sources of pollution. Robotic Puppy Named Chip It is remarkable by its wheels of the original shape on the outside of the paws that move the toy over complex surfaces, whether it's smooth, slippery tile, or carpet. The electronic intelligence and ingenuity of the CyberDog is based on the abundance of sensors in its design. Accelerometer, gyroscopes, infrared, and sensor sensors analyze the lighting and other environment parameters. They allow the robot puppy to see, feel, react to the owner's touch and the gesture commands given to it. Unfortunately, the toy was not equipped with voice recognition technology, but a special bracelet is included as a control panel. It allows the CyberDog to recognize the host from a distance and to perceive the commands passed through the bracelet, among which is to me, dance, sit, and lie down. Developers even provided the FAS mode. When it is activated, Robot Dog starts barking at the person, amusingly imitating the attack and aggression. The toy turned out to be very funny, but it's unlikely that once Robot Dog can replace a living dog, with what the audience of this video will certainly agree. Chip is better to use as a toy for your real dog. These innovative inventions do an excellent job. It is unlikely that they will someday turn up like the machines from the film Terminator. Although, this is a completely different story. Okay, sir. Okay, sir, you can stop there. You can go to second one. Okay, select fine. Uh, yeah, okay, guys. Uh, it's like... Uh, uh, in this uh, video, kids, okay, like in this uh, video, you have seen regarding the uh, total uh, the uh, bio-inspired robots category, and after that, the mobile robot category. Okay, like I hope that you got a clear understanding that how uh, uh, this two robots plays a vital role in our uh, uh, how to say it's like day-to-day -day life and uh, in the research purpose as well. Okay. Now, uh, as I said, uh, the industry robot is a huge uh, one. Okay, it's like it is a huge uh, categorized one, and uh, it will be having a total different uh, flow. Now, I have the second view with the industrial working category. Okay, it is all about the uh, industrial brand like uh, after that uh, Boston and uh, Mitsubishi. All the robots with the working of all the robots will be displayed in the second video. That is like industry robot. So you can play the second video. Okay.
Papier, die Amplitude und den Anstellwinkel. Die hat alle Vorbereitungen getroffen und ist bereits abgewischt. Und wir sehen den steilen Anflug wie bei also Flugzeug, Helikopter und eben das Segel in einem Objekt vereint. Das ist modellbauerisch wirklich eine ganz hervorragende Leistung und eine immense Funktionsintegration in diesem kleinen Gleichgewicht zu halten. Jetzt kommt der Spannende, wenn man länger mehr noch helfen darf beim Landen. Aber das sieht schon ziemlich gut aus. Stop. Okay, guys, that's so like uh, now you have seen uh, the full stitch of the uh, industrial uh, robots category and its uh, working nature. Okay, it's so like uh, for example, Kuka Maximum, uh, uh, the all over India, the uh, latest brand is coming into the players, uh, the uh, brand of uh, Kuka. It's so like uh, uh, they play a great uh, role in the arm robot. Category and for different uh, types, uh, we have a uh, different uh, look. So, uh, this is all about the uh, types and the working nature of the robot. Now, I like to uh, make you into the second uh, sector of the webinar. It is like 
how the robots uh, help uh, during the pandemic situation because that made the uh, career of robotics into a different plane okay it's like before covid uh, it is not that much uh, a huge ever okay it's not that much huge ever but after the covid it's like uh, in the post pandemic the robotics reached just very high and many people uh, got aware regarding the robotics and automation and the uh, how to say it's like uh, the job nature and uh, as well as the career uh the career nature uh has increased a lot uh, in the uh, field of uh, robotics after that uh, so those who are uh, pushing with the uh, robotics and automation mechatronics okay it's like uh, those who are related with that uh, sector has a huge uh, career okay, it's like huge uh, positive career uh, in the upcoming uh, field okay now i uh, share the uh, screen of uh, okay that's like a robots help them cover anything it's like totally i have split it into five uh, nature okay it's like the five category the robots uh, made into a vital role okay first one is uh, uh, for a video conferencing purpose okay it's like a, uh, in the during covid time i hope that you all have uh, Uh, known regarding the pros and cons and after that disadvantages of all the things it's like uh, when the person is affected with covid they definitely can't able to meet the people or uh, doctors all the things that time uh, to uh, make a communication okay it's like uh, to uh, get the uh, bondage uh, between the uh, relatives friends families we use a video conference just like we have a video communication right like this uh, your robot is like a mobile robot is uh, created for that and uh, it is uh, getting into the flow of the patient's uh, uh, room and uh, that time we can able to communicate with them it is not about for the families or the relatives it is also for the nurses to the doctors so that is uh, how to say it's like that is uh, uh, maintenance of the social distancing and after that that is all uh, many advantages Uh, for stopping the covid from one place to another place okay it's like for frontline workers doctors nurses uh, if you see the picture okay it's like if you see the image uh, you can clearly have a note that uh, in uh, it has a tab like attachment okay it's like a total camera like attachment and the, the nurse is having the controller uh, with the help of a mobile phone okay it's like with the help of bluetooth uh, we can able to ca- control it and we can able to channel it okay it is used in italy and after that uh, in china uh, it is same okay this robots uh, are used over there and it has a, another one uh, technology is like a uh, sweeping okay it is like a uh, uh, in hospital when the robot is moving from one place to uh, another place uh, it definitely needs uh, to how to say it's like uh, it needs to clean okay it's like uh, the hospital tend to be cleaning so in this that's extra attachment of a uh, sweeper where it sanitizes the floor okay where it sweeps the floor and it, it will be moving to the base okay so first row first uh, work that we can categorize as a it's like a video conferencing robot okay the first one will be video conferencing robot the second one uh, let me uh, split as a self assistant robot okay self assistant robot is nothing but uh, to replace the nurse or to complement the nurse uh the self assistant robot uh, can be uh, very much uh, effective for example uh, this robot uh, it's like monitors the patient's health after that it takes the record and uh, it will be uh, taking a, a database and it sends to the doctor okay there is no need to have nurse to interact with the patient each and every time okay so it is all about the uh, uh, assistant's uh, manner it will be checking the temperature and it will be uh, having the heart rate that's like a pulse meter okay and it will be all having and uh, uh, rather than that it will also have a video conferencing it's like it will also have the video conferencing okay. so uh, second one we can uh, call it as a self assistant robot okay. uh, the third type is okay it is used in uh, our india tamil nadu okay it's like it is about uh, mobile uh, conferencing that is like 
uh, mobile communication uh, which can able to take the robot uh, from one place to another place for uh, food delivery after that uh, for uh, uh, giving trust because covid patients definitely need food uh, medicines and all the uh, wearable material okay so that time we can't go and we can give so if this robot uh, gets into the play okay uh, if this robot gets into the play that will be a huge uh, support for uh, uh, to get food medicines in the correct time and with a secured uh, manner as well okay so this is about the uh, uh, food delivery robot okay that is like we call it as the uh, remote control robots okay just we can control using uh, remotely if you see the picture this uh, the, the doctor is controlling the robot remotely and this robot is uh, moving and it, it carries the water bottle and all the things and here also you have a big tray uh, in this big tray uh, you can uh, drop all the materials that you want and you can have the flow okay so this two uh, is the same category okay it's like for carrying out the food materials and all the things and third one it is used in germany and i hope that you all know about the chatbot okay it's like a chatbot we have alexa siri it's like it is all about a mechanism and here itself it is like a chatbot uh, where uh, this robot will be communicating to the humans and it will be uh, how to say it will be satisfying the queries of uh, human okay it's like it will be uh, replying to the human queries now as of now this robot is used in a supermarket okay uh, in supermarket uh, one main thing that a shopkeeper is uh, there to channel the uh, customer to the particular place okay for example if we need if we, if we need uh, any chocolate okay we don't know where it is we need to go and ask to the shopkeeper but now it is not like that just we can genuinely go and ask the robot it will be guide us okay it will be guiding us to the uh, proper place uh, it is not only it is used in uh, uh, supermarket it can be used in uh, many public places uh, public places in the sense for the uh, it's like airports okay it's like our uh, airports where we need humans need information it's like where we, we need information okay so uh, for that purpose we can uh, have a great uh, view towards that okay it's like we can have a great thing and third that is like a last one will be uh, this robots are uh, used as a public roaming robots okay uh, it is used in uh, tunisia that is uh, for uh, monitoring okay it's like for patrol purpose uh, this robots are used okay it is replacing uh, police this robots are used okay for example uh, to find out the uh, people who is roaming around okay it's like roaming around the places during the lockdown time uh, this robot will be going and it will be monitoring and it will be taking the uh, photo and uh, it will be filing the case over there okay it is not like uh, how to say a harsh behavior or nothing okay, just it will be taking the photo of it here you can see the vision okay with the help of a vision uh, it will be monitoring all the things okay so uh, it is about the patrol robot okay, for patrol purpose this robot used and second one in Los Angeles, this public ro uh, roaming robots uh, plays a vital role for uh, food delivery. Okay, it's like food delivery or uh, carrying out the different uh, uh, materials. Okay, it's like that is like emergency materials, medicines, all and so and so. Okay, to uh, uh, reach out that this uh, public uh, roaming ro uh, roaming robots are uh, used. So these are all the five categories where the robots are into the play in COVID-19 situation. Okay, it's like uh, after this, okay, it's like after this awareness and many news channels have been uh, telecasted regarding the uh, different types of robots and uh, like many people have seen and they go got aware regarding the uh, usage of robots in this uh, pandemic situation. Okay, so let, we can easily split that the career of robotics and automation uh, before COVID and after COVID. Because after COVID, there are many uh, industries looking after automation. So that's a really true thing. Because uh, we uh, we are uh, into the uh, manufacturing sector of uh, uh, that is like uh, industry robots and mobile robots, 
and we made a home auto self home automation robots uh, because uh, in the second wave okay so like in second wave we have we affected a lot okay really we affected a lot and there is no any place for uh, admit admission case okay, so like in hospital there is no any place for admission and uh, the people which have less severity or said to admit in that is like they said to uh, take home quarantine and after that uh, they said to take a home treatment that time what happens uh, we don't that's like uh, for example in my family if any person are affected okay uh, for them i need to go and give the food it's like i need uh, i need to go and give the medicine that time i don't wear any uh, how to say it's like a, a, a precautionary dress okay because in if we if we were in a hospital the nurse will be coming and giving and all the things they will be doing and they will be having a proper sanitation and they will be having a proper dress code but here we don't have so that is the main thing that uh, the people inside the home okay it's like people inside the home uh, got spread to avoid that to avoid that we came up with the uh, concept of home automation robot uh, it is nothing but uh, it is all about the interface of all the five types okay it's like all the interface the five types and we made a product and uh, uh, it is into the many homes okay it's like this into the many homes fine so this is about the five category and now i like to show you the uh, uh, how to say it's like a, a newspaper uh, release which is like a news release because i took all the country's news release and made it into a compact video okay it's like a, it will be a lengthier one and first 10 minutes will be a huge potential okay it's like huge potential one and i will show you the first 10 minutes of the video that will be a really uh, i i hope nothing and you can see the visual experience of all the things that i have said i uh, said the last one video sir can you Can you please uh, uh, stop the screen sharing? Ah, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I stopped presenting. Okay. We'll be using robot technology to inspect COVID-19 patients in isolation to minimize the risk of exposure for healthcare workers. The robot will make its rounds in the two isolation wards there, allowing healthcare professionals to inspect patients remotely. They will make use of the robot's camera and iSafe laser pointer to observe and make diagnosis. In the isolation ward setting would be uh, reducing the number of touch points with patients who are being isolated, thereby uh, reducing the risk of uh, healthcare workers contracting COVID. Um, it also allows us to um, more properly um, uh, converse with the patients more regularly as opposed to when we have to don the PPE every time we want to have an interaction with the patient. So increased accessibility will be a huge part. In another innovative use of technology, Alexandra Hospital has also launched a pilot telemedicine and virtual consultation service for elderly patients with chronic but stable diseases. They will be able to consult doctors through the Zoom app as well as laptops or personal devices. Hi. Name, please. Sharat Kumar. Phone number, please. 9030-300-300. Let me check your body temperature. Please take a step back and look into the camera. Your current body temperature is 100.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you have a fever, cough, throat pain or difficulty in breathing? Yes, I'm feeling feverish. The screening is complete. Now you will need to go to flu clinic for further assistance. Hi, Sharon. I see that you have fever with high temperature. Let me connect you to the doctor. How are you today? I'm feeling feverish, doctor. Do you have any throat pain or breathlessness? No, doctor. It looks to be normal fever and not COVID. Mitri will issue the entry pass for you. Thank you. 
Please collect your pass and proceed through gate number two. Doctors and nurses in Italy need all the help they can get, including from Tommy, the robot. Using my abilities, medical staff can be in touch with the patients without direct contact. Robots like Tommy operate in the most infectious wards. Staff here hope he'll reduce the risks of catching the disease by avoiding direct contact with patients. It allows us to use less protective clothing, like masks and overalls, which at this time are in scarce supply. The advantage is therefore double. The northern region of Lombardy counts for most of Italy's known coronavirus cases. Here, the robots help relay vital information between patients and doctors remotely and at any time of the day. This robot helps us monitor some clinical parameters of the patient, for example, heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, and also mechanical aspects of respiration. In Giel, in Belgium, hospitals are testing whether robots equipped with ultraviolet lights can disinfect wards to keep patients safe, even in hard-to-reach areas. Please leave the room, close the door, and start the disinfection. The machine's ultraviolet light quickly kills bacteria. We want to make sure that we touch every surface by the light, and this can be done by the robot as it drives itself through the room that is treated. In India's southern state of Tamil Nadu, robots are lending a helping hand by delivering vital supplies. The robotic equipment is also available uh, for uh, uh, giving uh, food and medicine to the patients. So it's a very good initiative, highly appreciable. Others are on security patrol in Tunisia's capital. This one, dubbed Robocop, is guarding empty streets, ensuring no one breaks the lockdown imposed last month. Spotting unmanned drones is slowly becoming a regular occurrence. Many are being deployed as part of coronavirus awareness campaigns. As well as making sure that everyone stays indoors and maintains social distancing. While the human touch remains essential in times of crisis, robots are stepping in where people can't. Rahila Mohammed, Al Jazeera. Moxie is a teammate. She's here to actually uh, relieve some of the pressure and of task and uh, hunt and gather that we all have to do it all day that takes our time away from the patient. Diligent Robotics of Austin designed Moxie to perform routine tasks in a clinical setting. We really need to understand the workflows of these units. We need to understand, well, what do nurses do? How do they do it? And, and how do we think about Moxie fitting into those workflows? Her little voice, you know, when she passes you and says hello in her eyes, she does, she does seem to have a personality. We don't think of her as a thing, it's Moxie. <laughs> During a month-long pilot, Moxie stocked patient rooms, removed dirty linens, and took samples to the lab. Almost 30% of our task during our shift is to fetch things. If you're in the patient room doing something, oh, okay, they need an extra blanket, it's not there, you need to step up. But at this time, all you need to do is press your voice or a button, call for Moxie team. It responds. So we anticipate that this will give us better insight into a couple of things, how nurses feel that they spend their time in a given shift, um, but also what time we could give back to our patients. So how this could potentially impact patient satisfaction, patient outcomes, um, and the overall experience within the hospital. Patients are intrigued by Moxie. They have seen at the door side, they will ask us, hey, what is that? Is that a robot? It's really funny and interesting the way how they look at it, but they are also happy that we are working with it. So it's been really amazing to look at what we're doing here in the very first phase, very first hospital deployment of a care assistive robot and what the future could hold. Because just the impact that we've seen for our team within this last month, it's amazing what we could potentially give to healthcare in the future.
She's really created with my team a sense of unity as we look at, oh, what, my, what can Moxie do for us? Sir, okay, sir, you can stop the interest. Okay. Miranda, sir, can you please continue? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I hope that, guys, like, uh, you have uh, seen the clear... Uh, Uh, clear advantage of the robots which is uh, uh, used in the COVID-19 situation. Like, uh, so these all are the uh, robots which plays a vital role. And the five categories is the total entire category that uh, we uh, seen over here. It's like now I like to uh, present you the future. Uh, it's like I would say career opportunity and the future the job opportunity where the robotics and automation us getting to the play. Okay, just I will share. Um, it's show that you can. I think, sir, your mic, mic is mute. Okay. 
माइक एक मिनट सही वॉइस एक मिनट not audible sir okay it is voice is not there i, I, I cannot hear your voice uh, again okay can you please again stop your uh, share share your screen again Okay, no problem. Let me conclude this session. Okay, it's almost twelve twenty-five. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Nirendran sir, uh, and it is a like a wonderful session. Uh, you have already uh, given demonstration of various different types of robots. Okay, uh, which is available in the market as well. And what are the use cases of robots? Okay, and how uh, robot has played a vital role uh, during COVID nineteen. Okay, and again, uh, you have shown a uh, demonstration of various different types of robots. They are working. Uh, they are used. They are industrial. Uh, application as well i, th I think the, this session is very uh, useful for the uh, students uh, in the uh, those who are in the uh, first or second semester or maybe uh, they are started their career in the robotics and automation as well okay uh, sir i am very much thankful on behalf of paul university and robotics and automation department as well uh, sir, at, at paul university uh, we are having the robotics and automation department as well as uh, mechatronics department as well so we'll have in the strength of almost uh, 60 uh, in the robotics as well as mechatronics okay and we'll have almost very good strength as well uh, again very good admission as well okay uh, and i'm very happy to uh, uh, say that the your session is very wonder uh, very useful as well as very wonderful session okay. and whatever video you saw uh, because due to this covid pandemic we are not able to uh, view or we cannot visit any personal Uh, industries where the particular uh, robots are used okay but uh, again i'm very happy and very uh, thankful for you to uh, uh, give us this uh, live demonstration of different types of videos okay uh, with the help of videos you know so on the uh, application of uh, uh, different types of robots as well sir and again I i'm happy and uh, in, in future if it is required or will call you for the again uh, uh, the hands on session if virtual session is always uh, possible okay i will plan to arrange the virtual sessions or it may be it is a hands on session is possible okay so i'm uh, always be happy to call you in the university campus okay uh, yes sir so uh, uh, with this uh, i would like to conclude this session here and again i'm very much thankful for you uh, we are having our uh actually madam temple madam can you please uh, unmute yourself madam are you there yes sir okay uh, i think uh, yes. so we will conclude the session here and again i'm thankful for you uh, sir i will remain in touch with you uh, for our future requirement as well okay and for the different types of sessions which we conclude here okay okay thank you sir